Hey, this is Mark H. Williams with uh, Circle of the Dark Mother. Um, if you're not familiar with me, I'm the author of Embracing Lilith and Embodying Lilith. Um, today, we're going to talk about work, how to work with Lilith, or really how I work with Lilith, um, because you know everyone works differently. So a little bit about me. Um, as I said, I'm the author of Embracing Lilith, Embodying Lilith. And I will be publishing a new book this coming year called Empowering Lilith. Um, I have a master's in theology. I've been a devotee to Lilith for over 20 years. I'm a consecrated bishop in the independent and Gnostic traditions. And um, I helped found Circle of the Dark Mother and I'm a high priest of Lilith. Um, so just a little bit about me so you have some feel for my background. So what's my paradigm? Um, I've also studied Kabbalah for over 20 years, and I work with Lilith through a Kabbalistic paradigm, um, but I work with her both on the Tree of Life and the Tree of Shadows, which is the Klippoth. And what that means is I work on both the bright tree and the dark tree. I look at her from both her bright and her dark emanations, and I tie the two together. Um, I've also been a Gnostic for most of my life which is a form of experiential spirituality. And that means it's not just head knowledge, it means experiencing what you believe. I also don't believe there's just one way to work with Lilith. Um, she will not and cannot be put in a box. So take anything I say or any other author teacher says as a starting point, but find your own way that works for you and resonates with you. Um, use what, if you've got other traditions you've worked with, use those work the way that makes sense for you, and then use these other ideas to fill out your, your practice. Um, I just think it's really important not to just follow somebody blindly without making sure it's working for you. So how do I see Lilith? Um, I, you know, I look at the history, first of all. Lilith originates in Mesopotamian religion um, as a goddess and a demon. And that sounds like a, uh, an oxymoron being both. But see, in the Mesopotam Mesopotamian myth cycles, any spirit or deity that doesn't follow the rules that the deities have set up is considered a demon. So it is possible to be a goddess and a demon, and she's listed as both. This is very different than the way Western um, culture views demons. In Judaism, she is said to be Adam's first wife, a demon, a consort to archdemons, the sometimes consort to God Most High, and also the partner to Adam Kodman. Adam Kodman's not Adam from Adam and Eve, but instead is the primordial universe of unification that, that is patterned after a perfect human being in full enlightenment. And she is said to be the partner to that universe. I consider Lilith a dark mother goddess who is all of what is listed above and transcends these labels because she's much more. So she is a goddess, she is a demon, she is Adam's first wife in, in the myth. Um, she is sometimes the consort of God and she is this primordial universe's partner because she is all these things at once. Again, as I said, you can't really put her in a box. So what about aspects of Lilith? Because I work with Kabbalah, I consider there to be several aspects or personalities that fit into the spheres within Kabbalah. And these are the Sephirot or spheres of the Tree of Life and the Klifoth or husks of the Tree of Shadows. Um, see, in, in Kabbalah, there's this idea that deities have partufim. Partufim means personalities in Hebrew. And what that means is, is that any deity can have multiple personalities or identities, which are literally different, but they come from the same source. And that's how I see Lilith. So some of the correspondences I have set up, um, I'll, I'll list her in a second, but I do have a video I'm gonna be doing um, sometime in the next month that will also go delve into each of the aspects. But um, at the first sphere, I, I look at Naama, uh, which means pleasant. She is an incarnation of Lilith. And Karina, who's a jinn in uh, Middle Eastern tradition, has aspects of Lilith. There's also this 
idea in some Kabbalistic texts of Lilith the Younger and Lilith the Elder. So Lilith the Younger is absolutely one of these aspects. The next one is Az or Lilith, uh, that's a Sumerian name, or Kualilitu, Lilith of the Sea. Az is the aspect of her that is anthropomorphic. So part human, part usually animal. Uh, for instance, she's the spider goddess. She's also a lamia, which means she has a snake body. Um, as Kualilitu, she's a mermaid. So she has a human top and a fish bottom. Um, so it's all of these anthropomorphized figures. The next one is Sumerian as well, Ardet Lily, or later called Lilitu. Um, for the next one, it's Noria and Mary Magdalene. Noria and Magdalene are both Gnostic Christian um, figures. Noria is the same name as Naama, but from Coptic. And then Mary Magdalene um, from the Gnostics is considered a very big figure who's found enlightenment. And in some traditions, she is actually the combination of Lilith and Eve. The next one, Agrat Bat Malat, or Agrat Daughter of Malat. Um, she often appears as the night hag, and she is in Judaic Midrash. Um, and one of the, um, the, the demons of prostitution, or spirits of prostitution, Nayama, Lilith, um, Agrat Bat Malat, and then Aishad Zunanim, who we'll talk about in a minute, are the four of them. The next aspect is Belquis, the Queen of Sheba. Um, and this comes right out of Midrash and some of the Quran, where it talks about um, Solomon seeing the Queen of Sheba's legs, which are hairy, and he knows that she is Lilith. Uh, Lilith the Elder, opposed to Lilith the Younger. Abizuth, who is only mentioned in one text, but shares a lot in common with Lilith, and says she has many personalities and many, many ways of being seen. And then Omaraka, which comes from Sumerian tradition, which is dragon of the void. This is Lilith at a very high level, uh, sort of beyond creation. And then the last is Aishit Zunanim. Um, her name is also sometimes called Kadesha. Aishit Zunanim is very associated with prostitution, but Kodesha means holy, or Kodesh does in, in Hebrew, Kodesha is feminine. And this would mean that she's a holy prostitute. I discuss all of these in more detail in my book, Embodying Lilith, a Gnostic Kabbalah of Lilith. And I also will have a video, as I said, that will talk about these. The next thing you may wanna do if you wanna work with Lilith is create an altar. Um, you see on the screen one of mine, and then another one is being displayed um, as, as my video feed. Um, I currently have four altars to Lilith, one for each direction. Now you don't need four altars. Um, you only need one. You also don't need to spend a whole lot of money on your altar contents. In fact, I recommend people start off with very inexpensive items. Um, you know, for a knife, you could use a butter knife. Um, for a wand, a stick. Um, if you can't afford a statue of Lilith, print out a picture or get a rock that reminds you of her, anything. You should consider having on your altar to start with a statue, or as I said, another image of Lilith, at least one candle. I go for more, but you can have, you need at least one. And then a wand or a blade. You will want both eventually, but one or the other, because both can be used for opening um, a circle or a sphere or however you work. Other things you may want over time are a cup, a pentagram, a crystal ball or some other sphere. I also put on my altars a skull, um, a black mirror, flowers, offering bowls. Um, sometimes I'll have incense or um, also oils, you know, just whatever makes sense for your altar. But again, you don't have to start with something big. You also, if you don't have a lot of room or let's say you live with someone and you really can't have a permanent altar, what I'd recommend is getting a small box and um, put your items inside of it. When you're ready to use your altar, pull them out, put them on top, use it. And when you're done, put them back in the box. So there's all kinds of ways you can get around, you know, if you can't really have the space. I know there are people that can't light candles because of maybe their apartment or other living situation. Um, you know, you can put a candle on there and not light it. You can put one of those little electric candles. 
you know, I'm all about doing what works with what you got. Um, it doesn't have to be fancy. If you want it to be, build up to it. Don't go spend all your money, you know, the first day just to have the perfect altar. Really, it's about your dedication, not, not what you have. So how to interact with the Lilith. Uh, light the candle on your altar, sit in front of it and chant Lilith's name. So I do what's called intoning. You can just say it though, but I do Lilith, Lilith, Lilith. Sit in meditation, talk to her, but I'll li also listen for her to communicate with you. If you wish to devote yourself to her, just tell her. Um, I have a more ritual, uh, a detailed ritual in my book, Embodying Lilith, but she will hear you either way. The more detailed rituals and practices are really for us, not her. The trappings of altars, rituals, helps to put our consciousness in the right space. She's already there listening, but sometimes we have trouble really believing it until we put all these trappings that makes us feel like we're immersed in it. Below is one of the sigils of Lilith. There are multiple, there are two most popular, the one below is, is one. You can print this and put it on your altar or tape it to a candle to help draw her energy. Um, and as I said, there's other sigils, but this is the one I use. It doesn't matter what you use though. What to expect. When you do your dedication to her, you may not feel anything right away. Um, and that's, you know, normal actually. Um, you know, right when it's happening, you just may not feel anything. I always tell people to wait a week or so and see what happens um, because dreams may come up. You may have life experiences that come up. Things may just come into your consciousness. If you don't notice anything in a couple of weeks, I'd say redo the dedication, but really put a lot of desire into it. Um, I think I think sometimes, you know, we we are scared or we're tentative and sometimes we need to redo it to be like, yeah, I'm really serious about this. Um, be prepared for change and transformation. Should you use experiences in your life to help you become who you truly want to be? And that will be free from societal expectations and desires. So for instance, women are actually absolutely um, taught by Lilith to be powerful in their power, in whatever they want their sexuality to be, and not be tied to what society says they should be. If you devote yourself to her, don't just stop practicing. It's better to set aside even five minutes a day than to plan on hours at a time and never get to it. I'll tell you, even if I'm deathly ill, I will do a couple minutes of just talking to her. Now, I spend more than five minutes you know, every day because I've been doing this a long time, but meditation is, does not come easy. It's something you have to really work to. So spend five minutes a day, if you're really in a bind even less, but keep with it. Because if you ignore her, and you haven't felt your dedication, she's not gonna take you seriously. If she has taken you seriously, she'll throw things into your way to turn you back toward her. She will put things in there to test your, um, you know, what you're scared of, what you are afraid will happen, what you think is, is bad about yourself. She will throw that at you because she wants you to work on it with her. I have a, an example of an invocation to Lilith here. It's, it's in my first book, I believe, Embracing Lilith. Um, don't be afraid to make your own. This is just an example. Um, you know, I made this up based on my experience with her. So don't be afraid to do that. So here, here's how I would do it. Lilith, Lilith, Lilith. I call to you, Dark Mother, to come and be with me. I call to you to wrap your dark wings around me to cradle me in your clear light. I am seeking your power of transformation. Please come to me and guide me in your ways. You are the goddess of night, mistress of the moon and queen of darkness. But you are also love and compassion. I give myself to you and I pray for your will to be done. I thank you for what you will do. I give you my love and devotion. Lilith, Lilith, Lilith. I also have a right in, um, I think this is my, in my second book, in, in Embodying Lilith. Um, and it says to chant this three times. And the way I do it is outside under a full moon or a new moon, either one. 
I'm only going to go through it once because, you know, we're not really doing it. Lilith above me, Naama below, mistress of the moon and queen of shadows, I dedicate myself to you. My life and transformation are in your hands. I become your vessel in this world, bringing your dark light to those around me. I am seeking your power. I seek to come to become my true self and submit to your will. I am yours and you are mine. I am one of your children for now and forever. After the third time, then you say, as it is spoken, so it is done. And when this has been completed, thank Lilith, say thank you, you know, for loving me, for accepting me. And this is another way of dedicating yourself. Um, and she will make immense changes to your life. I've learned that when she's speaking to listen, because if I don't, she's going to go from whispering to screaming. Um, and things will just come up that, that I have to listen. For more information, you can get, of course, my books, um, Embracing Lilith and Embodying Lilith, a Gnostic Kabbalah of Lilith. Uh, both are available on Amazon. They're available in a couple of bookstores here in Columbus, Ohio, at Witch Lab and also at uh, Mystical, Magical Druid. Um, the first book is available on um, also on Barnes and Noble, uh, but I did not put it on there for the second book just because of the sales volumes being low on, um, on Barnes and Noble. Um, you can go to our website, which is Circle of the Dark Mother. It's circulus-matrum.com, which is Circle Mother. Uh, Circle of Dark Mother was really long for a URL, so um, I shortened it. Um, we do have a lot of, everything's free on there. My email address is there. You can, you can get information and contact us. There are also many other good books. Um, if you're into the darker side, the more of the clip off um, or, or more dark ritual magic, um, Temple of the Ascending Flame with, um, I think the one author, and I'll probably mispronounce her name, I believe it's Asana Mason, um, has some really good books on the darker side. Paul Codman is, a, is an author who has a, a lot of books on a lot of topics, but he does have a Lilith book. There's also um, The Glam Witch by Michael Herkes. Um, his is more from a traditional witchcraft standpoint, uh, very different than the way I work, very different from the other authors I gave, but um, someone who loves Lilith, and if that's a paradigm you're interested in, that's a great book to get. Um, and then there are many, many others. Um, there's many I don't resonate with the way they work with Lilith, but I've still found them helpful. Um, I have every Lilith book, nonfiction book I've been able to find, which is about two dozen. And, um, you know, from my standpoint, I learned something from all of them. You can also go check out in any of our other videos on our YouTube channel. It's under Mark H. Williams, author. When you get there, you'll see Circle of the Dark Mother. Um, and our logo is at the bottom of this page. And you'll see that um, on most of our videos and, and things like that. So you can see, you know, you're on the right place. Um, that's it for today. Uh, next time, I'll be sharing another video next week. And I'll be doing one a week for the next... Um, well, however long I can think of topics. If you have any ideas for topics you'd like to see, doesn't have to be Lilith. Um, I, I do study a number of traditions. You can email me via the link on circulusmatrum.com. Um, if it's something I know, I will, I will do it. If I don't know it, I won't do it. I'll respond to you, but I will not try to teach something I don't have any experience with. So um, send ideas if it's whether it's about Lilith or someone else. Um, thank you. And uh, hope you have a, a blessed new year.